Hey guys, welcome to Spec Transfer and to Topic 3.1.4.1, General Properties of Proteins from the AQA A-Level Biology Specification. As always, let's start with a look at our specification. So, proteins are polymers, and this means that they consist of monomer building blocks. The monomers they're made from are amino acids, and the specification requires us to know the general structure of amino acids. We also need to know about the formation of dipeptides and polypeptides, as well as protein structure. Finally, I will cover the Biorat test for proteins. The specification also mentions that we should know about the relationship between protein structure and function, and there are plenty of examples of this throughout the rest of the specification, such as enzymes and antibodies, all of which are covered in later videos. So let's make a start. Proteins are made of amino acid monomers. Amino acids contain carbon, hydrogen, oxygen and nitrogen atoms, and sometimes sulfur. The specification wants us to learn the general structure of amino acids. We have an amine group, NH2, a carboxyl group, COOH, and an R group, which is the variable side chain. There are 20 different amino acids that are common in all living organisms, and all of these differ only in this variable side chain. Next, we need to know about the formation of dipeptides and polypeptides. Dipeptides are formed by the condensation of two amino acids, whilst polypeptides, poly meaning many, are formed by the condensation of many amino acids. To recap condensation reactions, just follow the link to my video on monomers and polymers top right. The bonds formed between amino acids are called peptide bonds. So let's have a look at this on a diagram. The carboxyl group of one amino acid loses an OH, the amine group of the other amino acid loses a hydrogen atom. These combine to form water, which is why it's called a condensation reaction, and the amino acids join to form a peptide bond, which consists of CONH. Note that in digestion, the opposite of this reaction happens. It is a hydrolysis reaction, and involves the input of a molecule of water to split amino acids apart. Next we'll have a look at protein structure, which consists of primary, secondary, tertiary, and sometimes quaternary structures. The primary structure is the sequence of amino acids. The secondary structure is when hydrogen bonds form between the amino acids in the chain, causing the chain to fold either into a beta-pleated sheet or to coil into an alpha helix. Note that where hydrogen bonds form depends on the amino acid sequence and the R group. It is this which determines whether an alpha helix or a beta-pleated sheet is formed. A fully functioning polypeptide is made up of a combination of these so-called domains, where each domain is either a section of alpha helix or beta-pleated sheet. Next we have the tertiary structure, which is the 3D folding of the polypeptide chain in a precise way, as determined by the amino acids of which it is composed. Three types of bonds determine the tertiary structure. First we have hydrogen bonds, which are weak attractions between delta-positive and delta-negative R groups. The delta means that it is only a partial charge, as opposed to a full charge which you get with ionic bonds. We have ionic bonds, which are bonds between fully positive and fully negative R groups, as well as disulfide bridges, which are covalent bonds between two sulfur-containing R groups. So I've ordered the bonds here in order of increasing bond strength, with a disulfide bridge being the strongest type of bond which determines the tertiary structure of proteins. Some proteins also have a quaternary structure, which is a number of polypeptide chains linked together, and sometimes associated with non-protein groups to form a protein. Note that a fully functioning protein may be made of just one polypeptide, so it doesn't have a quaternary structure. Finally, we need to know about the Biorette test for proteins. To test for proteins, simply add a few drops of Biorette solution. If protein is present, a blue ring will form at the surface of the solution, which disappears upon shaking, and the solution turns lilac purple. Note that the Biorette test can also be used for enzymes, as enzymes are proteins. Enzymes will be covered in my next video. Great, that would be the specification covered. We know that amino acids are the monomers from which proteins are made, and we have covered the general structure of amino acids. We have covered the formation of dipeptides and polypeptides, as well as protein structure. Finally, we have covered the Biorette test for proteins. That would be it for now guys, thanks for watching, please subscribe, comment, next time we will be covering enzymes.